Let's derive the pressure of an ideal gas. We're going to imagine that we have a little molecule that's part of an ideal gas that fills this container, which is just simply a cube of side of length L. So what is the rate of change of momentum of this particle? This particle is going to go this way, hit the side of the container, and then rebound backwards. So the change of momentum that we're going to link to the force in a minute will just be final momentum take away the initial momentum. The final momentum will be negative, so we're going to have minus mu mass times the negative velocity, assuming that the initial velocity is positive, the choice of sign is pretty standard, but a little bit arbitrary. Anyways, take away the initial momentum, which is minus mu. This is going to give me a change of momentum of minus 2mu. Our next step will be to figure out the number of collisions per second. So in order to do so, we're going to need to figure out the time between collisions. So we can say that the time between the collision of this particle will be given by the total distance that it travels. Let's assume that it starts kind of over here on this side. It's going to go over here, but then it's going to go backwards. So the total distance is just going to be 2L. Then we're going to divide it by its speed because time is distance over speed. And the number of collisions per second for that particle will just be the inverse of that. So for one second, we are going to have U over 2L collisions. Now we're ready to work out the force from that individual particle because F is equal to delta P over delta T. It's important to know that this here is the force on the particle. Okay, so the change of momentum is minus 2mu and multiplied by 1 over the time. Uh, you can also think about this. The time between collision is 2L over u, so we can just kind of take the inverse of that, which is the number of collisions uh, per second. So uh, what we're going to do is multiply by u, divide that by 2L. So what are we going to get? The 2s are going to cancel. We're going to get minus m u squared divided by L. Now, because of Newton's third law, the force on the wall will be equal and opposite. So that's going to make the force on the wall itself. And that's what pressure really consists of. So it's going to be the negative of that, which is just positive m u squared divided by L. So we've only drawn one particle, but this isn't really a gas, it's just a single particle. A real gas consists of many, many different particles, each of them doing their collisions with the walls of the container. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that the force on the wall, the total force on the wall will be given by M. And then the sum of all of those change of momenta of all the different particles, meaning that we're going to have to sum all of these velocities, let's say u1 squared plus u2 squared plus u3 squared plus etc etc and uh, then this here is divided by L isn't it and now it's really useful to derive a quantity uh, which is known as the uh, mean square speed Okay, so the mean square speed, let's put a little square here, is defined as u1 squared plus u2 squared plus u3 squared, basically all of these for all the different particles, because it's not just one particle in a gas, it's loads of them, and we've squared the speeds and we've divided it by n. Okay, well, this means that this quantity up here in the numerator, u1 squared plus u2 squared plus u3 squared, we can just rearrange for that. So we can say that u1 squared plus u2 squared plus dot 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 will just be equal to u squared the mean square speed multiplied by the number of 
particles. Okay, so now that we have this, we can plug this back into the expression for the force on the wall. So I'm going to plug this into here. I'm going to get that the force on the wall, let's just write it here, the force on the wall will just be equal to the mass times by n times by the mean square speed in that particular direction and then I am going to need to divide that by L. Okay, we're almost there. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to find the pressure which is defined as the force divided by the area. So because the area is just going to be L by L, so that's going to be a factor of L squared, I'm going to get M N U squared divided by L cubed. Well, L cubed is just the volume. So we can write this as this divided by V. Now we have just one final step to complete. That final step is that so far we've only considered the uh, velocity and hence the force in a single direction only. But the total mean square speed is going to be a combination of the forces in the three different dimensions. So let's say this one here was in the x direction, but we're also going to have one in the, let's say, the y direction and one in the z direction for instance. So um, it's, going to be, it's going to be a combination of three speeds. Now, assuming that they're all equal, roughly equal, because they're moving at roughly the same speed, we can say that this is equal to three times u squared. That assumes that u is equal to v is equal to w in this case. Okay, so this means that u squared like that, the mean square speed in that particular direction, will be equal to the root mean square speed, like so, divided by 3. And our final step is just to plug that in here. And what we're going to get is that this is equal to n, m multiplied by the number of particles, c squared, like that, the root mean square speed, divided by 3, times the volume. This is where the factor of 3 comes from. And now we have finally reached our final equation that finally rearranging for PV we get the equation in its famous form that PV is equal to 1 over 3 nmc squared where n is the number of molecules present, m is the mass of a single molecule, c is the RMS speed squared or the mean square speed and pressure uh, is PV is the volume. Hopefully, hopefully this uh, was useful. Thank you very much for watching.